Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Zebu Nation Plays Endless Space 2. That's right, we have our United Empire rolling along here. Um, we got a few things that we're working on, a few things cooking up in the hopper. First of all, we have this Academy Challenge going on here. But I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do that because we have to kind of warp all over the galaxy to find these people, find the Academy. Um, so we have to have at least one ship in orbit around a system to discover it. Does it say the exact... Visit Academy appears to be located in one of three systems. Visit them with a fleet and you may be the first to discover. Um, explore three indicated systems with a fleet. Show the locations. So yeah, they're in the center of the galaxy. So it's going to be kind of difficult for us to get there at this point. But that's got to be one of the things on the top of our list. What is this? Oh, we have uh, one of our pioneer ships going off in directions. I kind of forgot what I was doing since last time. Uh, we have these folks, the Harishams. They're almost part of our empire. They're giving us a lot of their resources already, so that's good news but uh, you know we want them to be official partners official members of the Empire and hopefully that'll happen soon we have this fleet flying around here that uh, they want us to take care of so we need to I think build up our military a little bit to take on challenges like that we're starting to get to the point of the game where we're gonna start to see more pirates and more little challenges like that so I think um, as soon as our next research comes along, we'll spend that in the military side of things and see if we can't start getting some actual warships instead of just some jumped up scout ships, which is all we have at the moment. Speaking of that, we might need to build one more of those. Okay, we got one more coming, so there'll be uh, next turn we'll have a new scout ship. And that'll be fine and dandy. Here's the patrol ship, heavily damaged. Um, and he's being repaired at the moment. I don't want to repair him myself because it'll cost, you know, two-thirds of our in total income or our total savings. Don't want to do that. So let's just move our fleets along, see what happens here. All right, we've discovered a new system, Yissel system. Yissel 1, small steps, inhospitable. Okay. Yisl 2, huge gash temperate planet, also inhospitable. Outstanding dust on that planet, though, so we need to figure out how, how to get to that one. Medium Arctic, inhospitable. It's, uh, it's an okay planet. And Yisl 4, large Arctic, inhospitable. So we, we might also want to start researching Arctic. We've got a few Arctic planets in our... <sighs> in our uh, sphere of influence here. So that's another technology we need to research soon. Um, we can investigate some of these curiosities, maybe. Or maybe we want to save that. Do we have anything going on right now? Active quests. Let's take a look. So we have the Hidden Rebellion, where we need to produce at least 99 dust per turn in your empire. We're getting close to that. Once we finish our astro finance science we might be able to reach that number find the academy of course and then the predators of kazinka weird uh, mercenary group that likes to put on stage plays before they rob you so it's i mean it's a fun quirk but still pirates a pirate i suppose so we don't have any scanning challenges right now is what I was looking at so that's so we can just sort of scan away freely unless we want to save these for future challenges but now nah, we'll scan them now uh, let's see Yissel 1 has a life form curiosity success all right more deciduous trees so that's definitely when we start upgrading our colonies that's definitely gonna be um, be what we're looking at to upgrade our colonies is use deciduous trees 
Because that'll make our colonies produce more money. All right, so not much else is going on. We have two idle ships. Okay, this guy's still idle. He'll stay there for now. And then... Uh, did I lose a pioneer ship? There's... Right? One... Pioneer. And up here... Oh, okay, so that is a pioneer. So I lost the scout ship. That's right. That's what it was. Okay, that's fine, 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 fine. So we'll just end that turn and continue. Um, I did not start my timer, so we'll start that right now. There we go. We got one turn for free, and now we're on the clock. 30 minutes to go. All right, we got the music going on in the background. Let's see. The event Breathe Deep has come to an end. Uh, it wasn't really that useful, honestly, because we weren't... Uh, Engaged in many fleet battles, so that's fine. And then there we go. We have a new pioneer ship, and we're starting up on the interplanetary transport network over there in Pictor. How soon before our Gemini colony is ready? Oh, there we go. It's ready right now. Oh, that's right. It was ready a couple turns ago. We're still building stuff there. All right, all right. Now I'm back in the swing of things. Uh, I really need to go this way. And scout out some of these other systems. Uh, Mikra 1. Small, another Arctic planet. Mikra 2 is a huge Arctic. Alright, so we definitely now have to research Arctic. If we're going to get our plans for colonies off the ground. It's going to have to include Arctic colonies. There's no doubt about it. Alright, so we have a second ship over here available. Take a look in the hangar. And we'll bring that ship out. So we now have two pioneer ships. Um, this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Am I going crazy? This is a patrol ship. I'm going crazy. I don't know what's happening here. 351. That's now roughly half. I don't know. For a patrol ship, I I'm not really down for that. Uh, so we we could start going this way more. So um, I guess we'll do that. We'll send the pioneer ship out here because we do have a lot of areas still left to go. So we'll send. Patrol ship, or should I just keep the patrol ship there, healing maybe? Yeah, I guess I'll do that. I'll just have them sit there and heal. So they'll defend the system, I suppose. Or I could put them back in the garage. Anyway, anyway, we don't need to worry about that. We got two turns left for Astro Finance, so let's keep the turns rolling. We need to we need to really improve on our science. Uh-oh, here they come. They're coming back this direction. So maybe I shouldn't have sent my ships away. Maybe I should have stood there and stood my ground but we'll see what happens Let's move our fleets looks like they're just sort of moving back and forth between Nis and Eris so that's if they stay there that's fine uh, ooh, we got an increase on the Hisho population here in Pictor so that's that'll improve our military standing a little bit all right, next turn we'll reach Astro Finance, and then we should start seeing our gold reserves going up. Maybe we'll reach that. And we just went up to 75. I mean, that's not bad, but still. We got more population, more Imperials on Gemini. That's good. We need to grow that colony. Good old Hadri Lenko, or no, Dimitri Lenko has increased his skills again. So now we need to start thinking about dust. So we'll go plus five dust on system with this skill. That's good. Let's see, there we go. That jumped our gold production up to 80. So we're getting real close to that 99 per turn. Close that. We completed the interplanetary transport network on Pictor and the drone networks on Gemini. Next, we got the Endless Research Park and Xeno Industrial Infrastructure. So we're still building up our 
infrastructure. And there we go, Astro Finance. So they've already... Oh, that's right, we've... Uh, man, I can't even remember what I did last episode, but this has brought back my memory. I put a couple of um, sciences in the queue there. So next up we got big data shipyards, which is what I wanted to do anyway. That's a military technology, so we'll go for that. And then uh, let's take a look at the science. What do we have after that? Um, do we have another science after that? Yeah, we have impactless sites after that, which is more dust on planets. I'm not sure that that's completely necessary, but we'll see if we can improve our dust production here with some of our other things. Now let's see, what do we need? What do we need for Arctic here? There's steps, there's snow, ice, and Arctic. So we need to, we need two technologies. Three technologies. Wait a minute. Let's go back to that. I hit the wrong button. We need xenobiology. And then we... Wow. We need a lot of technologies to reach Arctic planet. Um, that will get us tundra. So that's fine. I think there's at least one tundra planet we could colonize. But it's going to take a while to get to Arctic colonies. I thought it was uh, a quicker technology than that. But I guess not. So let's check in on the Hiroshims. There we go. Assimilate. The Harishims on Mira have been assimilated. There we go. Solo quest failed. Predators. Okay, so. The Harishims have decided that your assistance in this matter is not needed. Alright. So that's good. We don't need to destroy the happy mercenaries after all. So that solves kind of two problems at once. Really. So uh, we don't necessarily need to build up our fleets. You might might want to but we don't need to oh gosh our gold production has gone in the garbage what happened so bringing these folks into the colony has done what why is it destroyed our gold production uh i don't know i mean they it should have added to our gold production if anything Right, because they, they make 24 gold a turn. They don't have any buildings, so there's no extra infrastructure going on there. Why did we go from plus 80 dust per turn to plus 14 dust per turn? Makes no sense to me. So, let's, I guess, start building up our dust systems again. Here's, uh, we'll go with Cerebral Reality, which gives us plus 10. Uh, industrial gives us plus three per planet with luxuries. Intergalactic supermarket. We got all kinds of stuff going on here. All right, so that's fine. I mean, I should do the, I should be smart and do the production stuff first. So we'll do one dust and one production each. Cause. The way that works is it takes production to build these systems and these improvements. So if you build your industrial improvements first, you'll be paying for them, but you'll be able to produce other build them, other, other buildings quicker, other improvements quicker. So I'm going to balance it out with one improvement to increase our dust production with one to produce to increase our regular production. I'm having real difficulties talking at the moment. All right, interplanetary network. We'll move that in between xenotourism. There we go. So hopefully by the time we get to intergalactic supermarket, it won't actually take us 47 turns because our production will have been improved by then. And overall, it would take us less. I could just buy out the drone network too. You know, that would uh, reduce our gold reserves, but currently we don't necessarily need our gold reserves. We're worried about gold production per turn, not necessarily our reserves. 
So we don't have anything else to pay for. We're not in the negative. So I think I'll do that. That'll speed everything up. Yeah, that'll speed everything up uh, very nicely. All right, so there we go. We bought out the drone networks. Move our fleets. <clears throat> we don't have to worry about those mercenaries anymore. So there we go. We've discovered a new system, the Karana, Karana system. Let's see what this is all about. Maybe. There we go. Karana 1 is a large toxic planet. That's no good. Karana 2 is also a large toxic planet. It has unknown ruins curiosity. Karana 3 is a tiny snow planet. So we could, we could colonize that one pretty quickly. I think that would only take two technologies to colonize a snow planet. Or maybe one. I don't, I don't quite remember. Alright, so we'll send this fleet south of Yissel. Boy, there's a lot of, lot of systems out here. This is a very, very long arm of the galaxy. I don't know if our arms, our different arms, will actually intersect with each other. Because you see, in order to get to Debrunya over here, there's no, there's no line connecting it. So I'd have to have the warp technology, or I'd probably have to go down here to the center of the galaxy and then back up. And speaking of the center of the galaxy, since I don't need um, to worry about those pirates anymore, I can send. Uh, let's see, I can send this fleet here, this patrol ship, up to Mira. There we go. So there we are. We're going to continue to scope out the galaxy, use all of our available ships. And pretty soon I'm going to want to produce a colony ship just to, uh, you know, if I find any hospitable planets, I'll be ready to go. How are we looking on Pictor? So we've already got plenty of... Plenty of people there. Ooh, what's this? Pulsos? Who are these characters? This nation, a scientific splinter of the harmony, seek greater knowledge of dust in order to better understand the galaxy and seek the core. Huh. They are industrialists. Where did they come from, though? They just sort of randomly popped up on my home planet. That's kind of weird. Uh, do we have any specializations available? Oh, the Colonial Exchange is available. So that gets us even more dust production. What's this? Miners Union. Plus one resources generation on strategic resource deposits. I don't have any strategic resource deposits on this planet, so... That's not going to do any good for me, but I'll keep that in mind for other planets. The Denark University. Takes a lot of production. Xenotourism. So we don't really have much going on we need to build other than we need to build a settler. And then we'll go with the Colonial Exchange here. And I'll wait here. I don't necessarily want to specialize in the same specialization in the same system you know what I mean so eventually we'll get more more specializations that we can do and they'll each give us bonuses to different things that we need like production or influence or happiness or science or whatever so I'm gonna save that for this planet so we don't have two colonial exchanges in the same system but we could go to one of our other systems and check it out so Gemini 2 Oh, Gemini 4 is now colonizable. Cold planet. Uh, yeah, Gemini 2 has enough food to support Gemini 4. So we will colonize Gemini 4. And then we'll add Colonial Exchange here. This is when your, your gold dust production really starts to ramp up. Is when you start getting those. So they've got the Colonial Exchange as well. I still don't understand why adding this planet was so bad for our dust production it should have done the exact opposite makes me wonder if I understand how this game works but we'll see 
Maybe it's just a, a penalty you get for bringing in new resources that they've added to the game. They they give you a dust penalty. Does it does it show? So plus 33.8 from system dust production. That doesn't make sense. I should have had more than that. Minus 19 for military upkeep. Maybe it was the ending of... No. Because that... Um... We had that uh, thing that ended, but I thought all that did was give us bonuses to uh, fleet vision or something like that. Fleet, fleet vision and fleet experience. It shouldn't have done anything to our dust production, but something, something made our dust production drop through the floor. Have to figure out what that was. Have to do a replay and figure out what that was. Anyway, we know... Ooh, look at that. We know some stuff about other empires now. Where did that go? Uh, we have 147, I guess, victory points, you'd say. And let's see. So it looks like we're in third place. We have an unknown empire with 172 and an unknown empire with 160. And then we're third with 147, and there's somebody else with 142. If I went back and looked at the first video, I'd be able to tell who was who because I didn't randomize. I, I set each color to a certain empire. But, you know, that's fine. I don't have the memory of that kind of detail, so I don't know. <laughs> you might know, but I don't know. So anyway, let's go on. Let's move our next turn along. So where am I going with this? Empire, what are we gonna do? I mean at this point we're just looking to generically expand At the same time I really want to push towards the center of the galaxy here and that is probably gonna take research of warp engines I have to look at what technology I need for that. All right, so I got the drone networks that I purchased on Mira So now they're gonna be focusing on the cerebral reality and that'll be done in one turn so that'll That'll boost everything up. Our dust production is down to plus 12. You know, I understand we just built a building or an improvement. The drone network, and so that cost us some, but I don't know. We'll wait for the dust production to ramp up here. It's got to start ramping up at some point. So our ships have moved around. Let's see, we got a new system here, the Yersh system. Yersh 1, medium snow planet, Deci deciduous trees, alright. Yersh 2 is a large barren planet, it is, it is colonizable, without standing science. So that's, I mean it's cool that it's colonizable, but it has no food on it, so it's not really the planet you want to colonize first. You know what I'm saying, like uh... Your colonies will grow very slowly if you colonize the first planet you colonize has no food on it. What's this? GNY-8 collapsing star has been discovered. Short-lived star that has reached the end of its 10 million year lifespan. As it dies, a massive explosion ejects solar material out of its core at incredible speeds. At a safe distance, a collapsing star looks bright and beautiful. Plus 50 influence on system. Hmm. So if I extend my influence over this system, I'll get plus 50 influence just because it's, I guess, a cool anomaly. But there is the end of our spiral arm. So nothing else cool is happening there. Let's uh, send this scout ship down this way. Got some more anomalies to scan, but we can scan those on the way back. There we go. We found another system, another anomaly. Whoa, look at this boy. It's making some crazy noises. QR32 collapsing star discovered a short-lived star that reached its... Yeah, 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 we just read that. All right, all right. Get out of there. That was that's a very noisy fella. All right, anything else going on here? Not much happening here all right so we can end that turn keep rolling keep rolling so I've decided to change up my schedule here on YouTube still doing videos every day oh wait a minute here we go solo quest started lifting the lamp 
Opening your empire's doors to new population types has its challenges, but also its rewards. Each new group adds a strength and flexibility of society, contributing to the maturity of your empire as a whole. New objective, capture, assimilate, or attract a new population into your empire. Reward 110 influence. So we have to find another group of people. New event on the shoulders of super giants. A distant stellar giant about 80 times the size of an average star has just gone supernova. Supernova. Capitalizing on the media attention drawn by this event, a pacifist group within your empire has launched a campaign to bring home the fleets that were monitoring the event rather than leave them on patrol. Okay. Hmm. Plus 20 happiness on star system, plus 10% dust on empire for 15 turns. Increases pacifist party. Okay, so is that something we have to do or something that will happen already? Let's close that out and see what happens. Let me see if it's in our challenges here. Nope, so I think that's just something that's going to happen. Our dust production has gone back up to plus 20. Doesn't really tell us what else is increasing it. So does that mean I have to bring my ships home? I don't know. Don't know. We'll see. Hopefully it, it just happens. So we've built the Cerebral Reality on Mira. Keep that going. Next up is the Xeno Tourism again. We're just trying to boost that dust production. Marketplace, the titanium price has increased. All right, haven't been to the marketplace for a while, so let's. Well, we got our, we still have our laws going on. Leading political parties are the ecologists and the pacifists. We're still doing okay there. I'd still would prefer my my uh, industrialists to be in party or in charge, but. You know, you can't have everything. So we'll go to the marketplace. Whoops. Click the exact wrong thing. Uh, let's see. We still don't have access to this. We still don't have the impactless sites. So that's why we were researching the impactless sites is to get to these marketplaces here where we can buy ships and heroes. Currently, we can only buy luxuries that we don't particularly need or strategic resources, which we also don't particularly need. Now, if we needed dust, we could sell Hyperium. We got a lot of Hyperium. Or we could, I mean, more likely, it would be more profitable to sell Titanium because the price has just gone up in, of Titanium. We don't need to do any of that stuff. So let's move our fleets along. It's been a fairly uneventful episode so far. Let's see if we can have something happen. So these guys finally landed on these loud loud systems um i guess we'll just send them back because they got nothing else to do really just hang out here i suppose go and scan the anomalies in these various systems how about these boys they've just about reached nis <clears throat> and then we'll head down here and this will probably be a dead end system here and this will be the complete edge of our current empire but uh, you know there's always hope that there might be some some attachment to the spiral s center of the galaxy but probably not so we'll end this turn keep on rolling see what happens uh oh New event, an unexpected guest out of the blue. Literally, a new minor faction has abruptly moved onto one of your planets and have no intentions of leaving anytime soon. Whether they are friendly or not is yet to be discovered, but hopefully their intrusion won't be long. It's up to you to decide the best, how best to treat them. Well, we kind of need these guys, right? We have, um, we have that challenge to bring a new species into the Empire, so this, this helps us out. 
So plus two Calgaros on your system. All right, we'll check out those boys and see what they are. So there we go. We just completed it. <laughs> uh, a small immigrant community is forming. Your heart swells seeing them go about their daily business. Your empire is growing in more ways than one. So we attracted a new population, and there they go. Our reward is plus 110 influence. So there we go. We're up to 322 influence now. You can see our sphere here on Pictor is growing. We're just about taking over the Pegasus system. So that's cool. So it looks like we got to scan these fellas here at Gemini. So let's move our fleets. Hopefully they're friendly and we don't have to fight them. That would be terrible. But rather than spending a turn to scan, I'll head straight there with these with these fellas and see what happens. All right, so we've reached Nis down here. We got one anomaly to scan. We can probably do that real quick. Expedition successful on Nis. Your analysis of subterranean was successful. Honeycomb scope unlocked. Hmm. So it's another bit of technology that we discovered just sort of sitting there in some old ancient vault. Uh, let's see. Reverse engineering the endless scope discovered a dig site provided a fruitful endeavor. With the underlying principles now well understood, the honeycomb-like structure can now be constructed in any system, greatly increasing that system's ability to survey the surrounding heavens. Engineers claim that this scope is so powerful it can be used to read the serial number of equipment on nearby moons. Yikes. Plus five vision range on system. Okay. That's good, I guess. That'll help our defenses if it ever comes to that. You know, it'll be less easy for pirates and whatnot to sneak up on us. Like, what is this? Fifth alien force, an unknown fleet of pincers have arrived that's no good 44 attack 79 defense so this is what I was talking about earlier where this point in the game is usually when sort of the military needs start ramping up and these boys are a lot better than our little scout ships down here our pioneer ships uh, the pioneer ships have 34 attack 69 defense and these pincers yeah, they're about 10 points better in all categories. Uh, and there's three of them, and we only have two two of those pioneer ships. So we'd either, either have to have a much larger fleet than them or better ships. And at this point, both of those things are kind of far away from occurring. So we're going to have to just manage our fleets and manage ourselves and stay away from these guys. Um, they're going to be... They're going to be flying around, and they're probably going to be intercepting some of our cargo ships and just causing havoc in our empire. But uh, we got nothing we can do about that at the moment. So let's just finish what we're doing, finish scouting out our final system here. And, uh, yeah, that's it. So we'll end that turn, keep going here. Dust production up to plus 34. Uh-oh. New event. Call a spaceman a spaceman. On some of your systems, an antiquated classification scheme used to categorize minor civilization citizens has a religious community up in arms. The classification system is mostly meaningless at this point, but to officially accede to the protesters' demands would be a small bureaucratic nightmare. Okay, so ignore minus 10 happiness for 10 turns, increase scientist political idea, ideology, or change it, minus 15 production on colonies for 10 turns, that's kind of a hit, increase religious political ideology. So right now, both the scientists and the religious parties are pretty small parties, so it won't affect politics much in either event I don't like 
making my citizens angry. It just causes so many problems in this game. I had a, I had one game that was basically, it turned my entire empire into a giant trash fire. When suddenly every citizen got upset. I don't even know why they got upset. It seemed like a bug to me. It just came out of nowhere. But every citizen got upset and then suddenly my government ch kept changing. Like every turn my government kept changing. And that made everybody even more upset and my empire just sort of burned itself to the ground. So I don't know if that was just part of the beta and they fixed that. But either way I am kind of gun shy when it comes to making the... Uh, the population angry, so I'm gonna make the bureaucratic change and uh, Yeah, it seems like what the people want. I mean these are all like different races of people coming together to say Call a spaceman a spaceman. All right, so there's the timer, so I will ch make the change It's gonna reduce our production which is gonna hurt for 10 turns, but uh, you know What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? We got uh So we got new technology unlocked. Military 2 has unlocked. Looks like we're already moved on to our impactless sites. So let's take up this site. It's going to take 21 turns for that. That seems like a lot. Um, is there anything we could do sooner rather than later? Efficient shielding will grant us a new hull design, which could grant us a new ship capable of taking on those pirates. How long would this take? It only takes 425 science to do that. It would get us the Uranf class and the Girzi class. So those are the next steps up in our in our fleets. Those are actually sort of warships, as opposed you know as opposed to just scout ships. It's what we need, honestly. How much science does this impactless take? It takes 1500 science. So you know what, I'm gonna change change course here. Um, how do I make that the first choice? That's not how you do it. Tried to left click on it, that didn't work. Tried to buy it, that didn't work. I click on the number. No, the, clicking on the number just makes it go away. How about up here in the queue? There we go. Move it to first place. So there we go. I changed my queue around now. We're going for efficient shielding first. Then xenobiology because that only takes four turns. Then the big, the big boy impactless sites. 21 turns. So we need to start looking at improving our science. It's one of the things that we've been neglecting. But that'll be for next episode. So we're going to build up our military a little bit to take on these pirates. And we're going to continue uh, building the empire. So that's it for now. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.